Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Well, I tell you what, there's some confusing steps here. I, I, I get lost trying to get around this little picture. It, it seems like the construction's impossible. You go up one staircase and suddenly you're upside down. Well, today we're talking about multi-step equations and solving multi-step equations. And, and some of you are going to think it's quite as confusing as this picture. But after we get done today, I think you'll find it a little bit easier than that. Because we're going to talk about solving multi-step equations. We're going to talk about SADMAP, or reverse order of operations. And we're going to talk about moving variables and constants across an equal sign. In the last lesson, we talked about solving one-step equations. Like this, 3z equals 18. And hopefully you remember that we're trying to isolate the z. We're trying to change the expression so it reads z equals something. Well, in this case, in order for us to get it to say z equals something, we need to get rid of that 3. That 3 says 3 times z. So to get rid of it, I want to use the inverse operation the opposite of multiplying by 3, I want to divide by 3. And I need to divide both sides of the equation by 3 to keep it equal. And when I do that, I get 3z divided by 3 equals 18 divided by 3. And when I carry out that math, I get z equals 6. Well, that's kind of easy. Hopefully that makes sense to all of you. But what about this? What if it said 3z minus 3 equals 18? If I'm trying to isolate that z, there's two things on the left side of the equation that are interfering with me from isolating the z. I'm multiplying the z times 3, and I'm subtracting 3 from z. Well, it's not really that complicated. Instead of a one-step solution, this is a two-step solution. I've got to take one step to get rid of a subtract 3, and I've got to use another step to get rid of it three times. The only question is, which should I get rid of first? Should I attack the subtract 3 first, or should I go after the three times first? Well, you all remember the order of operations, I hope, PEMDAS. PEMDAS says you should always do parentheses first, and then exponents, and then multiplication and division, and then addition, and then subtraction. But in algebra, when we're trying to isolate the z, we're trying to undo operations. We're doing the opposite. We're doing the reverse. We're trying to undo these operations. So we're going to use our order of operations in reverse order. Now I've called that SADMEP. There's nobody in the world who's ever heard of SADMEP before today. It's just PEMDAS backwards. But I'm using that hopefully to help you remember that when you're using uh, the order of operations on an algebraic expression, you use it in reverse. You do the subtraction and addition first, and then you tackle the division and multiplication. So when I look at 3z minus 3 equals 18, I want to go after that minus 3 first. And the opposite of subtracting 3 is adding 3. So I'll add 3 to both sides of the equation. Now I can simplify that to 3z equals 21. And I can go after my other 3 the 3 times z. 
The opposite of multiplying z by 3 is dividing z by 3. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. I get 3z divided by 3 equals 21 divided by 3. And that simplifies to z equals 7. In this example, in order to isolate x, I need to get rid of a minus 7 and a minus 15. And I know that I'm going to use inverse operations. I'm going to use the opposite mathematical operation to get rid of that particular number. And I know I'm going to attack my addition and subtraction first, and then my multiplication and my division. But sometimes it's a little confusing. What operation is really going on between my variable and that number? Well, here's a technique that will help you make sure you figure out the right operation. First, I want to draw a circle around what I want to get rid of. In this case, I want to get rid of the minus 7. I didn't draw around just the 7. I drew around the minus 7 because I want to get rid of both the minus sign and the 7. I'm also going to draw a circle or a box around minus 15 because I want to get rid of minus and 15. Now you can see, after I get rid of that minus 7 and that minus 15, the only thing left on the left side of the equation would be x. And it would read x equals. And that's what I want. Okay, well now what's going on between that minus 7 and the x? What operation, what mathematical operation do I want to reverse with an inverse operation? What math operation is going on between minus 7 and x? Well, they're being multiplied by each other. It's x times minus 7. How about what operation is going on between x and minus 15? Well, hopefully you can see that I'm subtracting 15 from x. So the in inverse operation would be to add 15. Here's another example. 5x minus 6 equals 24. In order to isolate the x, I've got to get rid of a 5 and a minus 6 so that my equation reads, reads x equals something. Well, which should I go after first? Reverse order of operations would tell me that I need to go after that subtract 6 first before I go after the multiply by 5. So, I'm going to add 6 to both sides of the equation. When I do that, on the left side of the equation, my plus 6 and my minus 6 are going to cancel each other out. And it will now read 5x equals 24 plus 6. Now, look at this. Originally, I had 5x minus 6. And I've moved that 6 to the other side of the equation. And when I do, it becomes positive 6. Let's look at that again. I got 5x minus 6 equals 24. Well, I want to move that minus 6 to the other side of the equation as one of the steps towards isolating the x. And when I move it to the other side of the equation, it becomes positive 6. And the expression reads 5x equals 24 plus 6. That's just another way for you to look at this addition and subtraction of numbers in an equation. I can also move that 5x to the other side of the equation. First, I'd need to remember that it was positive 5x. Then, when I moved it to the other side of the equation, it had become negative 5x. Now this rule that we just learned about moving parts of an expression from one side of the equal sign to the other doesn't work with coefficients. That 3 is a coefficient. The 3 is being multiplied by x. And I can't move that coefficient to the other side of the equation. 
I can't take that minus 3 and put it over there because it's being multiplied by x and that just doesn't work. This only works when I move an entire portion of an expression that's being added or subtracted. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, I'm trying to solve 6x minus 4 equals 14 for x. I need to isolate that x. That means I need to get rid of that 6 that's being multiplied by x and that 4 that's being subtracted from the x. And I want to get rid of the subtraction problem first and then the multiplication problem. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides of the equation. When I do that, I get 6x equals 18. Now, I need to divide both sides of the equation by 6 in order to get rid of that 6 and isolate the x. And when I do that, I discover that x equals 3. You try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. All right, in order to solve for x, I need to get rid of a 15, and I need to get rid of a minus 3. The minus 3 is being multiplied times x, and I don't do multiplication or division first. I do addition and subtraction first. Now, hopefully you can see that that 15 is positive 15, and I can rewrite this expression minus 3x plus 15. I'm really adding 15 to minus 3x. So I want to attack that first and I can move that to the other side of the equation and when I do it becomes a negative 15. So now the expression reads minus 3x equals 30 minus 15 or minus 3x equals 15. Now I need to get rid of that minus 3 so that I isolate my x and the equation reads x equals something. It's real important that you notice that I don't want to just get rid of 3. I want to get rid of minus 3. So I'm not going to divide by just 3. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by minus 3. And when I do that, I'm going to get x equals 15 divided by minus 3, or x equals minus 5. That's part one of our two-part lesson on solving multi-step equations. Now it's time to go to www.mastermath.info where you'll find worksheets and quizzes to test your knowledge. Then go back to mastermath.info and take part two of solving multi-step equations. Well, I hope you learned a lot, and I hope we see you again real soon.